Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be the full review of the HyperX Alloy Origins Core 60%. This is HyperX's first 60% keyboard. It's coming in at $100. That is a pretty standard cost for a keyboard, if you ask me. This was sent out for a review. Not going to affect the review, obviously. Um, and something I can say about this keyboard that's really going to shock you, it has some good aspects, and it has some bad aspects. And in this video, I'm going to explain all of those so please make sure to like and sub for that heroic effort on my part first thing we're going to talk about are the keycaps because i tried one of hyperx's old alloy origins the tkl um a few weeks ago it had terrible keycaps that legit shined after like hours of use i don't even think it was days um hyperx has improved they now have double shot PBT keycaps. Um, I've heard online that these are just the ducky keycaps. I can't vouch that. I've never tried ducky keycaps, but these feel terrific. Much better than the HK Gaming keycaps I had on my Apex Pro, and uh, even better than the Razer keycaps, the Razer PBT keycaps. So I don't know. These keycaps are amazing. They are an absolute shining point of this keyboard. Um, I do want to mention in the keyboard, you get a bag um, with these extra goodies you get a keycap remover very nice very nice um you get this oh wait, fuck i have it on my board you get this HyperX escape key it's amazing it's truly the pinnacle of escape keys much better than the shitty stock one you are provided and uh, you also get this space bar and i watched the reviews of this keyboard and people talked about the space bar they didn't mention that it has the most uncomfortable texture ever you can legit feel like every single ridge i would never recommend using Using this but I'm definitely gonna put it on for the thumbnail picture because the RGB shines through and it looks pretty sick um, but yeah it feels fucking like it was genuinely unusable for me um, resting my thumb on it in crunker I also want to mention that if you do suffer through the pain and use this key um, it is ABS so it's gonna shine anyway but it does look cool I just want to reiterate that um, next thing to talk about are the switches and this keyboard is only available with the HyperX red switches and these are honestly the second best red switches I've ever tried second only to the uh, NK silk reds I might do a review of those soon because I really did enjoy those uh, but these are much better than Gateron reds and like cherry reds and they do feel very nice um I don't think that really saves this keyboard, though. I'll do a sound test now, and I'll include the stabilizers, because um, the stabilizers are kind of a nightmare. Up the gain on my mic, so you should be able to hear the pure rattly goodness of these stabilizers. And honestly, I don't know, my mic is probably going to do some, like, voodoo shit and pick up some pinging. Um, I cannot hear any pinging coming from any of the standard switches. Um, the spacebar is a rattly nightmare. It's so, so loud. Um, like, Razor Huntsman TE levels of loud. Like, fucking infinite decibels. And when considering keyboards, I promise you, I consider the feel of it a lot more than the sound. And I will acknowledge that these stabilizers are still pretty smooth, despite, like, the rattly nightmare. Um, but the sound, it is just so loud, it is able to pierce through my closed-back headphones while I'm fucking playing Fortnite and listen to music. So that's just kind of insane to me. Um, now I want to talk about the back of the keyboard. Um, there's, like, three levels of kickback feet. Wow, that is insane. So much customization available on this keyboard um, at a hundred dollars though I feel like the stabilizers are similar if not worse to something like the GK 61 and same with the switches so all you're really paying for is I guess like the quality of this board it feels like well over like 700 grams I decide to weigh it coming in at 743 grams there's just no way to angle my camera to the point you can see the scale um, it's just a curse that I have to live with daily. Um, but this keyboard does feel like very well built and solid. It is made of aluminum. Um, honestly, yes, this is something that could fend off a home intruder. Get asked that on every single keyboard review. Um, the RGB, one of the most important things when considering a gamer keyboard. Um, it's sufficient. Um, does it really um, tackle my RGB desires and quench them? Not necessarily, but it gets the job done. Um, PBT 
keycaps just never shine through as nice as um, ABS does. And honestly, I don't care if you can fucking get my identity from the fingerprints on an ABS key. I just like the way the RGB is. Um, but in reality, it's more than good enough. Um, also, something massively important. Um, the FN key is on the absolute right side of the keyboard. I cannot stress how innovative this is this means that the arrow keys are directly next to it as well so you don't have to like do a weird ass hand configuration like clicking this and then clicking like k to hit an arrow key that does not gonna happen anymore um just fn and then the keys right next to it so innovative um it made using it not completely aids um, because other 60 percents it's just like ugh um, but with this it was pretty simple um also same thing with the uh like F row, if you just click these, obviously, if you haven't used a 60% before. Um, I don't think it's like a terrible layout, especially this way. Um, it is obviously extremely compact. Doesn't really matter that much for me anymore now that I have a giant desk. Feels bad. Yeah, I guess functionally this keyboard was perfectly fine, and my major complaint, I feel like everybody who touches this keyboard's major complaint, is going to be the stabilizers. Other than that, it's mainly just nitpicky. Um, comes with the detachable USB-C cable, uh, but not many of my other cables fit in there, so I just rock with the stock one. It's really not a big deal to me at all, uh, but I don't know if you have like an $80 cable, might want to check in with somebody on that. Um, damn, the RGB does not look bad from this angle. That's actually quenching my desires, certainly. Um, but I haven't really talked about the switches that much yet. Um, I don't know what it is about them, but they are definitely a step up from, like, standard cherry switches. And I know that those are no longer the only switches available on Ducky, um, which makes it even harder to just make a case for this keyboard. Because it's like, yes, this keyboard is pretty dope, um, was able to use it perfectly fine for gaming and typing. Um, but I feel like there's other options available and now that i have been custom keyboard pilled just kidding i haven't been custom keyboard pilled ah got you but yeah, I just don't really know who this keyboard is for. I know that HyperX has really good, like, global availability, so if you're in, like, a country where there aren't many good keyboards, maybe this is one of the best ones available. Um, but if you're in, like, America and you just want, like, a good budget gaming keyboard, I would say just get a GK61 over this. Deal with the shitty aspects of a GK61 instead of dealing with that on a more expensive keyboard. Um, obviously, like, the keycaps and the build of the HyperX board is much better than the GK61. But I'm just thinking from like a buying a budget gaming keyboard, um, it'll be essentially the same in practice. And if you want like a really premium typing experience, there's no way you're still watching the video. And that's honestly going to be all for this video. Um, this keyboard, it has one fundamental flaw, um, but the rest of it is pretty solid and pretty promising for their first try at 60%. Um, unpopular opinion, but I honestly don't want to see the aqua switches on this keyboard. I'm fine with just the linear. Um, these are 45 grams of actuation force, and it just feels pretty standard. Wasn't making many typos, and I was absolutely not having any problems in game, uh, similar to how I was with the uh, NK Silk Black and the aqua switches on this keyboard um, so I do think that the switches are really nice it's just the stabilizers oh so unfortunate but yeah that's gonna be all for this video no seal of approval but it's clearly not a piece of shit and I will leave you with a final sound test and I just hate listening to sound tests where the people are just like actually doing typing tests and they aren't putting like way too much force on the keys it's honestly cringe because in gaming scenarios you're gonna be mashing the keys how is that gonna sound this is how it's going to sound for OC players, for example. And this is how it's going to sound for Crunker players, Fortnite players. 